So, we begin chapter 12, which is the last chapter that we're going to be covering that deals with test type questions. And so, chapter 12 is, so tell me about your childhood, Inter interesting interviews. Uh, the interviewing process may be one way to uh, gather information. Um, we have a whole type of research that has uh, grown up called uh, qualitative research where people are using the, the, the interview process to gather information from uh, people in, you know, whatever field. Uh, it's used quite extensively in the educational field because, you know, you can focus your questions to the interviewee and really look for and gather good information about whatever it is you're trying to measure. And so we're going to look at a little bit about interviews. I don't think we see a whole lot of um, use in, uh, in that in vocational education, but uh, obviously it is something that is used uh, in research so let's go ahead and take a look at this short chapter the interview process has probably been one of the oldest um, forms of um, data gathering been used for thousands of years you come up with a set of questions that focus or elicit the answers not accessible through more traditional means of assessment like our objective tests. You can use interviews when you want to know the story behind the story. If you're looking for in-depth in, uh, information uh, interviewing is the way to go and there's a you know it takes some time to do it there's a a right way and definitely a wrong way to get it done but you really have are, are having to try to you know inter, interview to get the information that you're trying to get but yet through the course of that process you're trying to reinforce some answers to make sure that they're consistent on the part of the interviewee and that they're not going off in all kind of tangents and so you can go back and then check and see if they've been consistent with the information that they've uh, passed on to you. Uh, it's a rich source of information regarding human behavior. Uh, you know one thing that I've always uh, kind of wished that I could have done would have been to sit down with some of the um, men and women that um, taught in the trade school system and were instrumental in uh, building the technical college system in the uh, 60s and 70s that kind of formed this thing together uh, to kind of get their perspective on uh, what was done and why it was done. Uh, that kind of verbal uh, history uh, is priceless right now because many of those people uh, are no longer here. So it's a wonderful way to kind of get a, uh, a verbal type of record of information and certainly dealing with the human behavior is just one aspect of it. Now, there's different types of um, interviews, types. We've got a highly structured interview, a guided general interview, and then unguided non-directive interviews. And these kind of go from, you know, very formal all the way down to informal. Anything goes, anything can be said. So. Just got to be very clear about what you want to do and and use the right interview technique to get it done. For a highly structured interview, 
you would have basically a oral questionnaire with all of your questions uh, laid out they are predefined set up and you just ask the question and then record the response you know I don't see a whole lot of difference between this and taking a questionnaire you know but you are the one if you're the interviewer doing all the work you've got what are called closed or fixed response questions such as where were you born you know, they ought to be able to figure out a town or a place so there's not a whole lot of flexibility built, built into the answer um, what is your favorite subject well you're telling them with a singular word like subject you want one thing and then ask them why it's their favorite subject and so they can give a specific answer as to why or why not they they have a favorite subject what year did you begin college you know a very um, definite time and place um, that would basically give a fixed answer what's your current area of study you know or, or what's your current area of teaching a very specific kind of answer that you're looking for and so that's the kind of questions that you would see on that type of uh, interview the guided or general interview is a little different your questions are developed to guide the interview in a particular direction you as the interviewer know what you want and it's your job to get that information out of the uh, interviewee and so you are the one who's in charge here you guide the interviewee and so you ask questions and then utilize follow-up questions to be able to really uh, narrow down the focus of what kind of information you're uh, looking for and this is an example of a, maybe a series of guided questions here we start off with the first one here who do you believe has the greatest influence on your education well you can think of uh, you know maybe a former teacher a former professor maybe your parents something like that but you could get that interviewee to think of who had the most influence on them and then narrow down why do you believe this is the case compare this person versus somebody else and then you know you can get down into the rationale of why they chose education rather than being something else and so you can really look at I guess the motives and the uh, motivation behind why they made that decision and you can really dig deep to get some good information um, from the interviewee and you know sometimes whenever you'll uh, be watching the uh, evening news on television it, and you'll have reporters that'll be talking to people just kind of watch and see how they guide people to getting the information that they're after or else that they, that they want to share with us about some news item finally you got your non-directive interviews they're also known as unguided interviews and that's kind of like a unguided missile you got a set of questions but you allow the interviewee to take the interview in any direction they choose and so it's just like you're you're kind of there just for the ride and they will go in whatever direction they think is appropriate now you've got the unstructured interview that basically is all about the interviewee where they do the talking and you do the writing or uh, listening and then a conversational interview it's kind of like uh, these talk show people uh, I guess kind of like the Johnny Carson uh, uh, 
approach where you and the, the interviewee are kind of car carrying on a little conversation between yourselves, you know, and and so it's a little bit different, very unstructured, very uh, informal. And so, you know, doesn't mean that you can't get good information just uh, by just sharing information between each other. Now, look at this. Been a while since we've seen these two words here, reliability and, and validity for our tests. Remember reliability is where we measure the same thing and we get consistent results and validity is basically trying to come up with a, the content and the information that we want to test on. Now Reliability and validity can increase with structured instead of non-directive questions. Remember, you're trying to get specific information, and so if you and I have questions that, are, that, that we've um, developed ahead of time to ask to everybody, you know, we can gain some measure of reliability and validity. We certainly want to uh, make sure that um, the content covers what it is we wish to measure but also that we ask them everybody the same question so that the reliability can be built into the uh, process but as you get more and more uh, general and also less structured in the other two uh, approaches your reliability and uh, validity will certainly increase, uh, I'm sorry, decrease. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get some good information, but, you know, don't, don't count on doing any kind of uh, major uh, generalization from your research, um, because it's just what the person says. You got more control in, in your interviews and that will yield less error variance. Remember the, remember the um, bell curve we talked about way back when? And that basically you know, 60 some odd percent, about 68 percent of all of your scores are going to lie between your mean here. This is like one standard deviation plus or minus one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and so forth and so on. Um, I'm sure you've forgotten all, all, all about that. But Remember that the variance, which is the shape of this curve, we want it to be very small because that means all of our scores are kind of falling all together in a very narrow band. And so that means that our reliability will be high and our variance is low. And we don't want a whole lot of variance. We want to stay consistent and so uh, if you're asking everybody the same thing and expect the same kind of answers back from them uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of variance there now the errors that can happen there are to ask the wrong questions we might be all confused about what it is we want to uh, measure and so we ask the wrong type. We can fail to follow up our questions. If, we want, if we're trying to, to look for a specific thing, we can ask follow-up questions so that we can get that person's answer there. And then it, it, you get uh, interviewer error because you and I may 
um, fail to write down during the course of the interview some uh, pertinent information. The way to kind of get around that is to go ahead and ask the person if you can go ahead and tape the uh, um, interview, either videotape it or, or record it so that you can go back and then transcribe your uh, your notes and then get a written uh, hard copy of what uh, took place and so that can minimize this error right here by doing that all right some general guidelines to use for interviewing before you begin prepare nothing will uh, substitute for good preparation you've got to, you can't go in and just wing this thing you've got to go in prepared know what you want to ask and you know get the, get it done and to do that you got to think ahead and also have some f familiarity with the uh, subject that you're talking about uh, if the interviewee starts talking about things you don't have a clue about how can you go back and follow up so you've got to be familiar with what you're trying to uh, get the interviewee to uh, discuss things to keep in mind while you're interviewing explain the nature of the interview to the person being interviewed this is just professional courtesy if you if you and I are gonna ask someone to participate in it then we owe them the um, the time to sit down and just tell them this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it uh, kind of give them a little idea of what to expect to kind of you know uh, keep them from being nervous or uh, unsettled and so try to make them as comfortable as you possibly can so that they you know will give you uh, the information that you're seeking and then you can practice 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 your uh, your inter interviewing skills doesn't matter um, if you use a mirror or something or just talking to the thin air just go over your questions go over your your delivery um, and also if you have someone that will kind of play the role of the interviewee just do a dry run to kind of get to the point where you're comfortable doing it and so like that that confidence can kind of rub off on the interviewee too most important thing if you get nothing else out of this chapter assure confidentiality you know there's a number of ways that we can do that uh, in most research, you, the names of your people are um, not given, and so also you need to uh, ensure that person that you're interviewing that the information that they're giving is going to be used in your research or in your, uh, well, however you're going to use it, and that's it. And so if you don't have that uh, confidentiality uh, you got nothing and uh, you know you could be setting yourself up for some uh, maybe some legal I issues too so always make sure that the interviewee knows that what you th they they say is going to be held in strict confidence and then choose your setting this is also a very important point you know the environment that you'll in conduct the interview in you know you certainly want to have some place that's kind of private that uh, it's just you and the interview e um, there's not a whole lot of uh, distractions going on around uh, you all <coughs> no telephones um, things like that ringing and uh, and disrupting their th train of thought so uh, 
find yourself a spot that, that, that you can get that done because that's very very important some more things to kind of keep uh, in the back of your mind allow more time than than you need certainly you don't want to rush this process give the uh, interviewee the time that he or she needs to be able to fully explain themselves um, this may be an issue for some people take notes notes and notes that's why the tape recorder is a good thing to um, to utilize maybe even a videotape machine stay in touch the uh, interviewee ought to have the opportunity to kind of stay in touch with you um, certainly to find out what your uh, research uh, would uh, find out but also maybe uh, they forgot to say something that would be very important that they can get back in touch with you and maybe clarify some things or else add some additional information that, that uh, w would be important to you. Get them and, and keep them talking. You want your interviewee to talk and uh, you know you just need to keep that process going uh, so that you're, you're gathering the information that you're trying to uh, to get put on a happy face you know let's be positive um, so that you can make the interview as comfortable as possible so that so that this isn't a chore or a um, uh, a major uh, problem for them to do they should want to be able to sit down and uh, have you be as cordial as, as, as possible to make this a very good uh, experience for them use transitions to keep going to kind of keep the uh, to kind of keep the the interview going you know you you may transition from one subject to another and so you kind of give the uh, interviewee a uh, an opportunity to kind of sum things up and then kind of transition into the uh, the next uh, series of questions and so you just don't want to just abruptly say okay that that's enough let's move on to this use some time where they can kind of transition and also that gives the, the, the interviewee some time to kind of change their their mode of uh, thinking or else their their train of thought and then wrap it up and be sure to say thanks that's just uh, common courtesy right here and certainly they should know when it's time to stop the interview that you've gotten all the information that that you want that their their job is done and be sure to thank them for the the time that they've taken and they've sacrificed to help you out so uh, Some advantages and disadvantages of interviews, they can provide rich and detailed results, but the disadvantages, like we said before, they are highly individual and don't allow for generalization. And so you can't make a whole lot of general, uh, you know, adapt, you know, what your, your findings to a whole lot of different situations because all that uh, your findings are really true about are, are the people who you interviewed this is what they said and that's about it you can't generalize to the general public which is what a lot of research is trying to do they are very involved and time-consuming and expensive especially if you've got to go travel to to meet these people it's not an easy thing to do and so you got a whole lot of preparation you got to take care of and logistics you got to take care of to make that happen so it is not not an easy uh, method of gathering information and so it's a great technique very unique it can delve deep into a topic uh, you can get at a person's core beliefs to see what how how they believe about something and you can 
look at uh, all kinds of topics that other methods can't. And so this wraps up this unit on test questions. You've completed part three about your different item formats. Now you're ready to learn about different tests. And this is going to transition us now to the different types of tests that uh, are out there like achievement tests, uh, personality tests, and things like that. And so uh, we are now looking at uh, I guess the applications of all the questions and all of the uh, test theory that we've talked about so far and so uh, this next set of chapters are, are going to be quite uh, interesting uh, I think uh, for you so this will now I guess wrap up this particular uh, chapter.